Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This is the last video in my anesthesiology playlist. We have a quick review. This is the 10th video, so if you have any problems, please watch the previous ones, because here we're gonna do it so fast. Wanna say thank you to Jay who supported my channel, and this playlist is only possible because of him. Anesthesia is general, regional, or local. As for the anesthetic drug, we have two types, the general anesthetic or the local anesthetic because regional anesthesia uses the local anesthetic. So how many types of anesthesia? Three. How many types of the anesthesiologist agent or drug? Just two. Hey, medicosis, which anesthetic is the best? Shut up. There is no such thing because there are no solutions in life. There are only incremental trade-offs. Every medication has pros and cons. Anesthesiology has a freaking great history to say the least. Doctor used to spit coke in your wound in order to make you numb before the procedure. Nitrous oxide has a great story. Please watch my previous videos. Chloroform was used on the Queen of England during labor. So in the good old days, which were not so good, we used to use ether, cyclopropane, and chloroform. But today we use halothane, inflorane, isoflurane, desflurane, sevoflurane, methoxyflurane. Let's start by talking about general anesthetics, specifically the inhaled general anesthetics. They have vaporizing machines or vaporizers. The halothane one is a red machine. Isoflurane is purple slash magenta. Sevoflurane is a yellow colored vaporizer. General anesthesia has analgesia with it, but not every analgesia has general anesthesia with it. Anesthesia care phases, preoperative, intraoperative, postoperative. Evaluate, choose pre-medicate, and then during the operation, monitor, access, plan. Postoperative, control, monitor, dispose. If I want to give you general anesthetics, as you know, we have the inhaled option and the intravenous option. You will choose one of these options plus a neuromuscular blocker. It makes the intubation easier and it makes the surgery easier. Do I need to give a neuromuscular blocker with regional anesthesia or local anesthesia? Shut up. How do general anesthetics work? They stimulate GABA. GABA is inhibitory. How about local anesthetics? They inhibit the sodium channels, causing prevention of depolarization. Why do we give you a general anesthetic? We want you unconscious. It is a state of reversible controlled unconsciousness. We want you to lose memory, lose pain sensation, lose the ability to move your skeletal muscles and sedated. Stages. First, you have no pain sensation. Then you are excited to the point of delirium. And then surgical anesthesia. This is where the surgeon is working. If you do it too far, this can lead to middle depression and coma. Here are the stages. Remember that the surgeon is working during the stage. How do I tell the difference between three and four eye movements? If the eye movements are decreased, but still there, this is stage three. No eye movements with respiratory arrest, that's stage four. So before the surgery, as the anesthesiologist is making you sleep, you go from here to here. After the surgery, you go from here up to here, and then you're awake. Welcome back. You won't believe what you were saying during delirium and excitation. We recorded everything. I'm just joking. This is a quick discussion about the general anesthetics. Don't forget the propofol infusion syndrome. Hypothermia is evil, nasty, and ugly. Malignant hyperthermia, which happens with succinylcholine, is bad too. We have talked about that before. Okay, medicosis. I gave the patient the general anesthetic and the neuromuscular blocker. What should I do now? Manage the airway. Because remember, it's all about your ABCs. Airway comes first. And we have talked about the 10 commandments of airway management. Pause and review. Don't forget that obesity is not fun. Prepare plan B before you even think about managing the airway of the patient. There are many techniques to manage the airway. We have the mask ventilation, endotracheal intubation, and others, such as the fiber optic, the retrograde tracheal intubation, the blind nasotracheal intubation, the supraglottic airway devices, and the transtracheal techniques, such as to tracheate or to cricothyroidate. We're done with general. Let's talk about regional. We have neuraxial and we have limb. Let's talk about neuraxial. Midline in the axis. Okay. We have spinal and we have epidural. Spinal. Stick the needle into the subarachnoid space where the CSF is located. How about epidural? Stick it to the epidural space. You need to master your surface anatomy and remember the song to keep the spinal cord alive. Keep the needle between L3 and 5. Complications of neuraxial block are many. Spinal anesthesia has these complications. Epidural has the same complications plus these five. You need to know everything about post-dural puncture headache. Why does it happen? Because you punctured the dura. 
This will lead to some CSF loss, which makes the brain sinks and descends. This sinking action can lead to headache. Moreover, if the sinking is so severe, it can tear bridging veins, causing a subdural hematoma. How do I know that this happened? 14 to 18 hours after the procedure, the patient will complain of frontal or occipital headache or both, plus maybe some ocular disturbances. What the flip should I do now? Bed rest, fluids, pain medications, intravenous caffeine injection, and if it's so severe, blood patch. Basically, you take some of the patient's blood and inject it into the patient's own CSF. Regional anesthesia is either in the midline or on the periphery. Let's talk about the periphery. Limb blocks. Why do we need it? Anesthesia, post-operative analgesia, and management of chronic pain. Contraindications. If there is skin infection at the site of the injection, before you inject, look at the skin. If it's infected, don't inject, doofus. If the patient is suffering from a bleeding or a coagulation diathesis, or a pre-existing neuropathy before you stick the needle. Anesthetic agent used is local. Again, in regional anesthesia, we use a local anesthetic medication. Example, any of this, and you might consider adding epinephrine. How do I know that I'm hitting it right? Ultrasound, nerve stimulation, and paresthesia. You're not trying to hit the nerve. You're trying to hit around the nerve. Lame blocks or peripheral nerve blocks include cervical plexus, brachial plexus, intercostal block, wrist blocks, femoral block, lateral, etc. Not only the extremities, but also any peripheral nerve. The intercostal is not in the extremities. It's the same mechanism, however. It's a peripheral nerve block. It's regional anesthesia achieved by injecting a local anesthetic drug. Don't forget that the neurovascular bundle is below the rib, not above it. And the mnemonic is vein, vein, then artery, then nerve, from above and downwards. For beginners, you need to master these four types of peripheral nerve blocks. We have general anesthesia, regional anesthesia, and local anesthesia. Let's talk about local. Hashtag shop local. Hashtag inject local. This is what happens when a freaking anesthesiologist creates an Instagram profile. How do local anesthetics work? They inhibit the sodium channel. They inhibit the rapid depolarization phase of the action potential. You need to remember the types of fibers and what they are for. As time passes, you go from here to here. First fibers to be blocked are C because they are the thinnest and they are unmyelinated so they are the easiest to penetrate and then followed by A, Delta, A, Gamma, etc. Each fiber type has a specific function. Local anesthetics are either esters or amides. The name has the answer and that's the easiest question on your exam. How do I hasten the onset of the local anesthetic? You add a bicarbonate, because as you add a bicarbonate, pH is going to increase. But pKa will decrease. The lower the pKa, the higher the percentage of the unionized lipid-soluble fraction of a certain medication. If I'm more lipid-soluble, I'm more easily accessing and passing through and penetrating the lipid membrane. Therefore, I will inhibit the sodium channel faster. And that's how you hasten the onset. In chemistry, like dissolves like. But in pharmacology, like reabsorbs like. If you have an acid, put it in acidic medium, you will have it unionized, which will favor reabsorption. Like reabsorbs like. Oh, by the way, if you want to download these notes in PDF forms, they are on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Why do we add epinephrine to the local anesthetic? It has some pros for it. Epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor which decreases the absorption of local anesthetic into the circulation, which decreases the toxicity and decreases the risk of bleeding because it constricted the vessels. Moreover, the anesthetic is going to stay in place and increase the duration. The duration of action is going up. That's why we call this phenomenon time synergism. What are the disadvantages of adding a vasoconstrictor such as epinephrine? Epinephrine is beta-1 agonist, can lead to cardiac arrhythmia. It's an alpha-1 and beta-1 agonist can increase your blood pressure. Also, it's a vasoconstriction that can lead to ischemia, especially if the area has poor anastomoses. Side effects of local anesthetics include allergy, cross-sensitivity, systemic toxicity, cardiovascular toxicity, CNS toxicity, excitation, followed by depression. Don't forget the slurred speech, the circumoral numbness, and the tinnitus. Last, a quick review on the neuromuscular blockers. Why do we use them? We use them with general anesthetic in order to paralyze your skeletal muscles. What kind of nerve fibers are supplying my skeletal muscles? Cholinergic fibers. What do they secrete? Since they are cholinergic, they secrete acetylcholine, doofus. What kind of receptor is waiting on the muscle? Nicotinic sub M. M for muscle. That's the receptor on your skeletal muscles. N sub M. 
How do neuromuscular blockers work? They block the N sub M receptor on the skeletal muscle in the neuromuscular junction. How do I know that something is a neuromuscular blocker? It will have the word corari in it, such as the famous tubocorarine. These blockers can help you during surgery because they relax muscles and they facilitate intubation. But remember, these neuromuscular blockers are neither analgesic nor anesthetic. They block the N sub M and they are two groups, non-depolarizing agents and depolarizing agents. Depolarizing, only one available, succinylcholine, non-depolarizing, short-acting, intermediate-acting, long-acting. Look at the word corari in them. Look at this. Oh, yeah, everyone has cur in it or curi. The non-depolarizing only block the nicotinic sub M, but the freaking succinylcholine blocks the N sub N, N sub M, and M. Non-depolarizing have no effect on cardiac muscles or smooth muscles, but of course the depolarizing, since they block the muscarinic, they will also block smooth and cardiac muscles. Don't forget the story of the choline trace deficiency. Malignant hyperthermia is evil. Succinylcholine can cause succinylcholine apnea or malignant hyperthermia or both. How do I treat it? Stop the freaking succinylcholine, give dantrolene. You need to watch my video on acetylcholine trace because we talked about the deficiency of this enzyme and how clinically significant that is for anesthesiologists. Anesthetics and acid-base disturbances. Of course, you know that barbiturates are acidic, opiates and local anesthetics are basic. That's the most basic fact. Enough with my dad jokes. What do opiates do? Opiates, like most drugs, are pathetic. They make your medulla pathetic. They inhibit your respiratory center, which decreases the respiratory rate. Hypoventilation. And of course, carbon dioxide is gonna rise because carbon dioxide in the blood is inversely related to the respiratory rate. The slower the rate, the higher the CO2. Carbon dioxide goes up, and carbon dioxide is a freaking acid. Why? Because there is water all over your body. When you combine carbon dioxide with water, what do you get? Carbonic acid. Say it one more time. Carbonic acid. Yep, you get respiratory acidosis. It's an acidosis caused by the lungs. Most drugs can cause this, with two famous exceptions. Aspirin and non-steroidals and estrogen, they actually boost your respiratory center. You breathe like crazy <laughs> and you're washing away your carbon dioxide. <laughs> As the respiratory rate goes up, carbon dioxide goes down, leading to respiratory alkalosis. When you lose an acid, that's an alkalosis. If you want to learn more about the acid-based stuff, I have a great acid-based course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Moreover, I have a CNS pharmacology course an autonomic pharmacology course, anti-cancer pharmacology course, antibiotics course, etc. All at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you, Dr. J, for supporting this channel. And thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Standards, where medicine makes perfect sense.